Hello everybody, welcome to the second episode of The Catch. Unfortunately the weather's not been great for moth trapping lately with a low overnight temperatures and quite a bit of rain so the moths in this video and the next video are actually the best bits from quite a few nights trapping. The first moth we're going to come to is the heart and dart. This is an extremely common moth, very very abundant at the moment. Half of the moths that have been caught in the moth trap are actually heart and darts. It's resident and common throughout the UK. Four wing is 15 to 19 millimetres. They come in two generations, so that means when the adults are flying around between mid-May and August and there's a small second generation in September. It's not a particularly interesting looking moth, it's very brown but you're very likely to see one so it's worth pointing out. As it is for the next moth, the dark arches. Again resident common, four wing 19 to 26 millimetres and usually in one generation between June and August. In my experience this moth ends up in houses very regularly, we quite often get them in the house, more so than a lot of other species. And because they're quite big, they tend to stand out and people quite often ask what they are. Here's a moth that's not quite so common, the White Point. It's in the books, it's an irregular immigrant, now thought to be established along parts of the south coast. And this is definitely true, because when I first started to moth trap, I only caught one or two of these occasionally. As the years progressed, I got more and more each year, to the point that I was catching 30 in a night, which means they're almost definitely breeding very locally. They normally have one generation between May and November, but the most of the moths will be caught between July and September. This is just another example of how things progress and new species end up in the UK. The next moth is a light emerald, a very nice looking moth, resident and common to the UK. 18 to 26 mm forewing, uh, mainly one generation between late May and early August. The next moth is a light brocade, uh, it's in the book as resident and local but I really don't catch many of these but it does seem like this year they've been doing quite well around here. Four wing is 18 to 21 millimetres and they have one generation between May and mid July. I say I don't catch too many of these, but it is a very nice looking moth. Okay, the next moth is a good example of a moth that people don't believe we have in the UK because it's too amazing looking. Uh, this is the burnished brass. As you can see, that gold brassy colour on the side in real life in your hand looks just like metal. It's so shiny. They're resident and common in the UK and can be seen between June and July. And there's a small second generation in August and September. The fore wing is 16 to 19 millimetres. As I say, it's a common moth, but it really does stand out. Okay, the last two moths for this video are both hawk moths. The first one is the eyed hawk moth, resident common. Uh, four wing is 36 to 44 millimetres. Normally one generation from early May till mid July. And this is an example of an adult moth which doesn't feed. The only time they feed is when they're a caterpillar. Then they turn into a moth to breed and then they die. The eyed hawk moth is very easy to recognise. If you look under its forewing, on its hind wing, where a poplar hawk moth I showed you in the last video has red spots, this has bright eye spots with blue and pink and all sorts of colours. Very nice looking. And the last one, and this is a perfect example of the moth that's always used by conservation groups to show off the moths of the UK to surprise people. This is the elephant hawk moth. Resident and common, forewing 28 to 33 millimetres. Mainly one generation from May to early August. It feeds on honeysuckle and tubular nectar flowers, basically. Tobacco is another plant which they do like. As you can see, they're bright pink. They're amazing looking. They're big moths. They're... People really don't believe that we have them here, but they are very common. In fact, my maximum number I've caught in one night's trapping was 36. It was a very impressive sight with lots of other hawk moths besides, but just 36 elephant hawk moths was quite a sight. The reason given for their name is the fact that the caterpillar can look a little bit like an elephant when it pulls its head back into its body and its neck comes out, as it were. It really is unmistakable. If you see a large bright pink moth, it is definitely going to be an elephant hawk moth. There is one other species, though, you should be aware of, which is the small elephant hawk moth, which is also pink, but the pattern's very different, and it's a lot smaller with a forewing of only 21 to 25 millimetres. I hope you enjoyed the second episode of The Catch. I have another one coming up quite soon with some very interesting moths in that. And now we're getting into the summer. Moths are really getting into their stride and new species and good numbers will really be going up and up as the days go on. So if you'd like to see some of that, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time. I explained to you before now there is two types of moths. There is micros and macros. Micros are small ones, macros are big ones. Now part of the macros is...